All right. Here's the first story. We got this from the Post Millennial. Breaking. Sam Smith stages satanic Grammy performance with strippers and devil horns. Petrus danced in the cage. Smith wore devil horns while dancers in long red robes with straight uh, hair fawned around him in a ritual circle. All right. I'm going to say it first off and, 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 and first and foremost. Yeah, I don't I don't really care about artistic, faux, satanic, whatever. But there's more to the story than just a performance of the Grammys. I think it was uh, Brett Dasovic from Pop Culture Crisis was mentioning that Marilyn Manson did stuff like this in the 90s. It's, it's not shocking to be edgy and be like, ooh, I'm going to wear devil horns. But there's a couple things about it. Notably, and we have this tweet brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's, let's play it. So you've got, you know, Kim Petras and Sam Smith, you know, cheering and getting some award. And then this. <laughs> It just really feels like um, a trifecta of right wing talking points happening all at the same (laughs) time. You have an unholy song called Unholy Satanic Imagery brought to you by Pfizer. And one of the individuals, uh, Kim Petras, is famous. I believe I believe Kim is from Germany and is famous for appearing in a documentary requesting a sex change operation at the age of 13 or 14 and actually having received it as a minor. So. All of these things together, we're not just talking about an artistic show that's meant to be shocking and edgy. There actually are elements that many people are shocked by. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this, uh, I don't know, people overreacting or is it just... Is it one of those I don't things? think brought to you by Pfizer's an overreaction. That's weird, man. <laughs> corporate, I mean, it's as, as far away That's from rock and roll as you can possibly get is corporate Pfizer, like corporate money, drug drug. Companies I mean, hey, they, they made 50, what did they make, like $50 billion, 100 billion or something in profit? Oh, I don't gosh. know. What was the number? Uh, I don't know. Was it that much? It, Pfizer? Yeah. In like, like one year? Yeah. Or, or maybe in the past two years, they made like 100 billion oh or something. God. Well, well you, have, been... you have guaranteed government contracts. That's basically free money. You know? John, you've been to the Grammys yeah. multiple times, you say. Yeah, yeah I was, I've yeah. been nominated for nine Grammys wow. all throughout my career. How many satanic performances did you see? I, to, to, the, to date, I've done a total of zero satanic performances, so I guess I'm not the cool kid anymore. Yeah. I think it's uh, to see this sponsored by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer. I thought, oh, there's the drugs and the sex, drugs and rock and roll. Maybe that's <laughs> what that is. Just different kind of drugs. Man. You know, the kind that you have to take that nobody knows what it's going to do. Well, you, you ever hear that like, I don't know, old trope of the hippie becoming the business person when they get older, like the boomers were all young and wild and crazy, and then they become suits later on. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm wondering if the real story there is that the hippies stayed hippies and suits stayed suits, and we just assume that because boomers were hippies, boomers, be, like the hippies yeah. became suits or whatever. But it's like, it's just a funny thought that sex, drugs, and rock and roll goes from being in the alley in the gutter and just... STDs, doing hard drugs and playing music and just degeneracy to on a stage in a multi-million dollar, um, a billion dollar industry with choreography and performances and pharmaceutical drugs, yes. not street drugs. What, what I got is this isn't even really satanic. This is like, if satanic's like Ozzy Osbourne chewing the head off of a live bat. That or, was an accident. Yeah, it was an accident, but he did. And there's blood on stage. Maybe not satanic <laughs> Ozzy, maybe not. People pouring blood on themselves on stage. Like, Dark, you know, that's a little more satanic. This is like the image of Satanism. It's not even real Satanism. It's it's all faux. Like they put on red and they have fire behind them, but it's like supposed to be. It's called. Uh, it's even called unholy. Like it's supposed to be satanic. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe the singer who is advocating for child sex change surgery is the thing that's. You know, this is Sam out. Smith. I'm just gonna say Sam Smith ripped off Tom Petty with that. Won't back down. Won't you stand my ground? That song that he did. He got yeah. for it and he lost. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Tom Petty ended up his ended up making uh, residuals off that. I think yeah. he passed. Part of the whole performance is that it's so surface level, right? Like truly provocative things. Your audience is gonna stand up and applaud afterwards. And be like, so great, good job. Like this was no matter. They could have done anything. They could have gone out there and done nothing, stood still, and the the audience would have been like, wow, groundbreaking, amazing performance. So glad that you guys did that. Uh, I think part of the, I think you're totally right. It's not even a, a very uh, original uh, depiction of like Satan and like semi anti Christian imagery. 
I think it's sort of cheap and done to make it seem like we are still countercultural, but really they're not. They are the mainstream supported by a major drug company coming out and, and uh, promoting talking points that are more and more part of the mainstream narrative. Like, yes, everything we're doing is okay. It's it's like they want you to know, be edgy and they can't <clears throat> anymore. You know, you know what I, I'm just not into is it seems like the principal commentary in all this is that the performance was satanic. And I'm just like, okay. You know, if you want to talk about Sam Smith, non-binary, child sex change operations, Pfizer being the sponsor, I'll be like, let's talk about massive multi, multi-billion dollar corporations sponsoring satanic shows that I can get. But it seems like most people are just saying like, look, they wore devil horns and they were dancing in red. I can't believe it. This is pure evil. And I'm like, well, what, what about it? Because, I mean, are we going to, seriously, we'll go back and talk about any, any death metal band or like black metal in Scandinavia and all the dark demonic imagery they, they use? I yeah. feel... Like there was more backlash when uh, Miley Cyrus came out and like twerked on someone at one of the award shows, right? That's like, arguably and, more satanic. Being sexual, well, is and, like, and people were more upset about. It. You heard more of both sides being like, "She's so liberated. That's inappropriate. Whatever." This, it's just like, yes, we're completely falling on party lines, right? There are the people who are annoyed by it are annoyed, and the people who like it like it. I mean, there's I think, no nuance to it anymore. If they had, if it had been green light, all green, and they were wearing shamrock hats, <laughs> no one would mention Satanism. <laughs> They would, and it would be called. They, no one even question why it was called unholy. So it's like the, the it's like the visage of of evil just to like sell tickets. They're like, look how dark, look how bad yeah, look we how can provocative. be. Too. We're yeah. Pfizer execs. Look how it we would have been. Do. It would have been an awesome show if they wore green with jamrock yeah. hats. I'd have been. I'd have been into it. Then the Irish community that. is like, take it back immediately. Like, what's wrong Sam? with us? Well, the whole Very point. Funny. The whole point. You spend millions and millions of dollars for visual visual elements to music is to sell more music. It's to sell music, sell tickets. It's it's to push the music further. Like you got a song, you want to put a great video behind it so more people see it and hopefully love the song, and it becomes your thing. And and people sit around and have really big meetings around really big tables like this at record labels, and they spend tens of millions of dollars behind a lot of these artists, all for marketing of the music of that artist and marketing the artist, so more people will want to consume that content. So when you look at this performance on the Grammys, they're sitting there going, what's going to make the most people like this artist, like this music, you know, come to the, come to the party here. I know what, let's just simulate hell on stage and then let's tag it with Pfizer, which is the biggest cuss word in America right now. This is the pitch. So what does that, what does that say about what they think about the audience, that this is what they're going to pour their money into for the visual backups of the music? Yeah, they probably think we're really gullible and we'll bite and start talking about they it on think, TV. Exactly. And we did. Well, I of mean, course. I did. I'm, yeah, I want to talk but that, about it. But that cuts both ways because you want people to like it. We don't like it. We're seeing it and we're repulsed by it. But, so, the, you know, this is what happens with, with everything culture war related. A lot of these big companies know. Uh, here, I'll give you an example. When uh, Jim Jordan was talking, we'll, we'll get super political. Jim Jordan's talking with uh, Chuck Todd on Meet, on Meet the Press. And he says, you know, with, with Donald Trump, you had the Secret Service protecting these documents. You had them locked. The, you had the DOJ actually came in and put the lock on it with Joe Biden. They're stored in a garage. Chuck Todd immediately comes to the defense of Joe Biden, despite the fact that any sane, reasonable thinking person is going to be like, what the f- are you talking about? Like, Chuck Todd's like, no, 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 Trump did it. Trump did it. And it's like, he just laid out for you the details of the story. You're not refuting them. You're just saying, yeah, well, Trump is bad. What they're doing is, 20, 2012, they had 39 million viewers, the most they've ever had. The year before it was like 29, typically averaged around 27, 28 million viewers. Then there was this massive drop off from 2019 of like 18 million viewers to 8 million. Then in, 20, uh, in 2021, I think 2020 to 2021. Then in 2022, they had, I think, about 8.93 million. They have no audience. Nobody watches. They'll take anything they can get. They are, they're, they are so desperate for attention. And I, I imagine there's probably some executive or somebody associated with the Grammys and they're sitting there saying like, guys, we lost 60% of our viewers. We're, we're dead in the water. What do we do? And they were like, people aren't going to want to watch shows like this. We need controversy. We need to piss people off. And here's the hope. Get a bunch of conservatives angry. And at the very least, you will rescue a liberal audience. So they start posting stuff like this, hoping that, Shows like this generate rage, but not that we will watch it, that the tribalists in the cult will say, well, we're big fans of the Grammys, and then they will start endorsing it, and the machine will then prop up the Grammys. I think to your point, uh, Beyonce won, I think she just became the most 
Grammy winning artist of all time at this Grammys, right? Beyonce is one of those things that like, she's one of these artists that like can do no wrong. And people, even if her music is bad, even if she's not interesting, even if she's involved with scandal, even if her husband or her, her sister is filmed hitting her husband in an elevator, like she survives anything, she's bulletproof. So to be like, and we're bringing back Beyonce who can, who you will rally around no matter what is sort of this way to keep an audience that, you know, they're not trying to win us over, they're trying to win their base back over. Uh, and I, I mean, Beyonce won for uh, Renaissance, right? This is like just after she per performed in, um, in the Middle East at, in a country that's completely anti-LGBTQ, even though her her album is supposed to be based off the black LGBT experience. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. They don't have to follow their own rules. They just have to bring out the figureheads that they like and know that you'll cheer for them because it's making someone else angry, someone you don't like angry. I didn't know Beyonce performed until just now. I care so little about this whole... <laughs> I'm, I'm a musician and I don't even... I Talk to me. This I, I credit all of this knowledge to Pop Culture Crisis. I go on and they teach me about these things. Yeah. Uh, I knew she was performing because an influencer that I follow on occasion was at this big private resort opening and she was performing for like some crazy amount of money. But what, what happened to music, John, in the last decade? Well, uh, that's a great question. I, I just hear, hear in, and you're right about what they're what they're trying to do is to, you said, salvage what's left of their liberal base. That's a good way to put it. But then I have to think, well, what's wrong with that base that that would salvage them? Well, I think... I mean, you understand that's how regular people look at it. Like, I'm a dad. I got two sons. You know, they can't... I, I'm not going to let them watch the Grammys. I mean, one of my sons caught a little piece of it and said, Dad, it looks like they're all in hell. And I said, no, we're in hell for having to watch it. Let, you know, change the channel. I mean, he, he was going, what am I looking at? You know, a little kid who loves music... And he's seeing that go on, like 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 Sam Smith is being devoured by demons on the stage when they push him down at the end, like they're eating him or whatever that was supposed to be. And then brought to you by Pfizer, my son goes, the vaccine company's behind this? I went, <laughs> yeah, he's 11. Well, so Damn. it used to be that there were very few channels. Cable TV didn't get really that much ratings because it costs money. And so the Grammys probably got 30 million viewers because people turned on the TV yeah. and that's what was on. Everybody was talking about it. Then the internet started becoming more and more prominent. YouTube videos. I remember back in the day, in the early days of YouTube, you, you could put out a video and these big channels would get like a million hits because it was there was very few, there was very, there was very little content on it that was worth watching. A bunch of weird stuff like a, a person filming a birthday party, then all of a sudden, higher quality content. But as more and more people started to use the internet, things started to decentralize and viewers started to flatten out. So I remember talking to some big YouTubers who were like, you know, we used to get a million, million and a half. Now we get 50 to 100K. And I'm like, well, yeah, now you're competing with 10, 100 times as many people. Mm. So the ratings for everybody drops. And what ends up happening is extremism and drama and uh, hard, hard like view politics are your path to getting clicks. So the thing about news is that everybody knows. Everybody knows everything, right? The balloon happens. Someone posts on Twitter. There's a balloon over Montana. Instantly, everybody knows. So there's no there's no news channel. You can't make a news show and be like, ladies and gentlemen, there's a balloon over Montana. They'll be like, dude, I heard that on Twitter instantly. You're telling me nothing. So what ends up happening is that news programs become people programs where they talk about their view of the news, like what we're doing, quite literally. But more importantly, they realize there's more views in talking about personal issues. So here's what ends up happening with something like this, in my view. They know they're never getting back those 39 million viewers because that was a captive audience. But if they're going to get back any amount of viewers, they need to create a tribe that will latch onto them. Do this and you will get hardline, hard politic, woke, liberal people who will defend you and watch just because you're on their side. That's how it works. So I think if this is the path things are going, part of me wonders if these platforms will die off because I'm hoping, you know, here's my gamble. Human nature is... Some people may want the shock content, the, the tribalism and the drama, and some people might want the conversation. And I'm hoping the conversation, the ideas are actually what's going to win. But I got to be honest, I'm not the most confident considering that these companies keep doing stuff like this. They're not backing down. Maybe they'll fail and go out of business and we'll all be proven right. Or maybe what's going to happen is you're going to find that humans really do just want to consume gutter trash Coliseum content and watch the lions rip apart the gladiators. <laughs> yeah, 
uh, you're talking about the Grammys, the people that the company that runs that might go bankrupt at some point. Is that the company you're well, talking their, about? Their, their, their views are down from two years ago by 60 some odd percent. It's, it's no longer that we have to wait a year to hear what like 30 people think is the best song on earth at a, some award ceremony it used to be. Now the Grammys should have their own YouTube network or their own network where every week you go there and there's new videos and songs on Grammy.com or whatever. Yeah. They should pivot. The, like waiting for the Oscars to show, to tell me what was well, good. And, I already know I saw it. I don't need to. You and award shows used to have this exclusivity exclusivity to celebrities, right? Like they're coming down the red carpet, and what are you wearing, and who do they bring as their date? But now you see all of that on social media. Any celebrity who's appearing at these events has some sort of social media following. So some of the mystery of you know being removed when we didn't have social media when you were waiting you had to watch the broadcast to get all of these details about these people that you look up to or you're interested in or you're following or whatever like you can get that at the drop of a hat now so you're right like the grammys and all the other award shows need to adapt or die because i don't think anyone looks i'm mean, very few people i definitely don't look to uh these institutional award shows to say like oh uh, yes i you have recommended a good song to me i will listen to it now you know like it it doesn't mean anything anymore you're more likely to get a reference from someone you know personally and then you don't have this elite space where you're saying oh well i get to see the celebrities live you see them all the time they're overexposed on social media thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.